Biology from the beginning is seeking optimal adaptation for whatever life offers. Children grow up in different cultural milieus. And in fact, that's the genius of biology. That's why children and adults can adapt to very different cultures, very different societies, very different behaviors, very different beliefs, because the brain at the beginning has the ability to adapt to a wide variety of environments, and it's shaped by that environment. So what poverty does to children beginning from the moment of conception through early childhood is it adds a burden of adversity and stress that can be threatening to healthy development. And it's that burden of adversity that is critically important for us to focus on to break this intergenerational cycle of poverty. Early childhood is particularly important to look at because it's a time where the foundations are built for all of the things that a society cares about from educational achievement, economic productivity, lifelong physical and mental health, uh, responsible citizenship, um, and the ability to be effective parents for the next generation. All of that has its roots in early childhood. So if we try to pull together and synthesize uh, decades and decades of research across a variety of disciplines, we really come down to three foundational areas that that kind of set the stage for what follows in, in life. The first is the critical importance of, of sturdy relationships with important adult figures. And an adult who is preoccupied with overwhelming stresses related to whether you'll have a roof over your head the next day, or whether you'll be able to put food on the table, or someone who's dealing with serious depression or a substance abuse problem cannot be reliably, reliably responsive to what children do because it has nothing to do with how much you love the child. It has to do with whether you're incapacitated and overwhelmed. Young children live in an environment of relationships and the quality of those relationships has a huge impact on, on all the health and learning and behavior that follows. Second is the actual physical environment in which children grow up, the extent to which it provides opportunities for exploration and learning, whether it's safe, predictable, stable, and also issues like being free of exposure to environmental toxins, which can obviously be uh, terribly undermining for health. And the third issue, of course, is nutrition. Um, we used to worry about undernutrition and children not getting enough to eat, and although that's still a problem now, a bigger problem is children getting too much of the wrong things to eat. So um, many people now think about obesity as another form of hunger, hunger for the appropriate nutrients. We are living in a, in a scientific revolution right now um, uh, in biology that's helping us understand um, at a much deeper level um, why, why some people end up healthier than others, why some people have more problems learning than others, and not going back to these old simplistic ideas of, well, you know, you're just born that way, or, you know, you've had a good environment, or, you know, you've got guts and grit and you pulled yourself up by your bootstraps. We really understand now at a, at a level that's, that's both complicated and simple of how genes and environment interact and how adversity, for example, adversity associated with poverty, or even worse, poverty plus violence and substance abuse and depression and other complications. You can't separate nature from nurture. You can't, genes and experience in the environment are inextricably intertwined and they affect all health, learning, and development. Nothing is so hardwired that experience won't affect it. In fact, um, this very exciting field of epigenetics is teaching us at the molecular level how it works, how experience actually turns genes on and turns them off. We really are talking about using science to not only produce better lives for people, but to reduce the huge costs that, that not individuals only, but society pays later for economic dependence, for poor health. Um, we have all this focus on the education system. The health budget is busting everybody's bottom line. And m the biggest ticket items in the health budget, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, mental illness, they are all much more prevalent among adults who had very difficult childhood experiences. So we could make a big dent on that as well. Albert Einstein said, if you keep doing things in the same way you've been doing them, 
you'll keep getting the same responses and the same results. We have the opportunity to develop some new ideas based not on just what people believe or what people would like to have happen, but based on a deeper understanding of what is it about poverty that gets under the skin and gets into our bodies and affects the way we learn and the way we behave and affects, literally affects our physical and mental health. Innovation doesn't happen by one creative person sitting in a room by himself or herself. Innovation always happens best at the intersection of different ways of thinking. So we have another reason now to break down these disciplinary barriers, these silos that separate health from education and education from human services, because it's the same science under all of them. That, that science of early childhood is the same science whether you want to reduce disparities in health outcomes or reduce disparities in school achievement.